Hey friends, I'm Jess Connolly. I'm an author, a coach, a Bible teacher, and a local church leader, and I love talking to real people who know what it means to have full lives, but also want to walk in abundance. This podcast is for you. It's not my podcast, it's ours. It's for people who crave lighthearted conversations and deeply spiritual truth. It's for people who are busy, tired, waiting, growing, dreaming, working, or praying about what's next. Wherever you're listening from, if it's quiet, mundane, or busy, I am praying for you and I'm so glad you're here. Let's go. Okay, listen. For the most part, I keep my pastoring and my podcasting separate, but every once in a while, I can use what I've learned and what I'm learning from local church leadership to serve my podcast community. So here's the deal. I've been leading Bright City for over a decade, and I want to tell you one of the most profound things that I have noticed after 10 years of leading people. People get weird over the summer. Stay with me. The rhythms are changing. Nothing is normal. Nothing is the same. And when we all come back together in the fall, this is one thing that I am telling you I will place all the bets on. When we come into the fall, everybody is just a little off. I've found the same thing to be true in women that I coach. Summer is the prime time for feeling behind, feeling stuck, feeling like you're in the wrong spot, or like you're not making something of your life. No matter your season, I am on your team today. Let me be your summer coach. If you're spending the next few months in a cubicle, carpooling kids, or even if nothing is changing in your life at all, this episode is for you. Let's make the most of our summer. Again, as a pastor, as a coach, let me tell you what makes my August and September very busy. I'm being as genuine with you guys as I can right now. I find myself having multiple coffee dates, multiple phone calls, multiple counseling sessions, and multiple coaching calls with people who all feel the same way. They feel like they're behind. They feel like they missed out. They feel like they're missing something. They feel like they can't get their head on straight. They're not ready for fall. They feel like they went somehow massively awry in the summer. And I've lived this enough years in a row to know we don't have to feel this way. I don't want you to feel this way as fall comes around. So I have five ways, five quick things that I want to encourage you with right here at the beginning of summer. Five ways you can make the most of this season and not go into August or September feeling like you're behind, feeling like you don't know where your summer went, feeling like you missed out on everything. Let's dig in and let's do this together. Number one, I have to encourage you right here at the beginning of summer to take the pressure off. I'm gonna keep it straight with you guys. I'm a mall girl. I'm not a farming girl. I am not even good at growing things, but I will say something is happening in my life and I've kept an orchid alive for an entire month and I have brought two plants on my porch back from the dead. I think what happened, here's what I told my mom the other day. You know how some people have a green thumb and some people have a black thumb. I think what happened is that my black thumb was so black and decrepit that it fell off and a new thumb is growing. So something is growing there. Anyways, I can grow things now. I'm going to give it to you straight. I don't know a lot about growing and I don't know a lot about farming, but I do know enough to know that you cannot plant and harvest in every single season. There are times of the year that are good for certain things. And what I perceive is true is that a lot of times we plant or farmers plant in the winter and the spring and things grow in the summer, and you harvest in the fall. And what I have noticed is that as humans, our spiritual, missional, relational lives follow a similar pattern, and it makes us very uncomfortable. What I have found is that a lot of women feel extra pressure where summer is concerned because they perceive that they are not harvesting enough. 
They're not seeing enough fruit in their relationships or in their callings or in their families or in their ministries or in their bank accounts. But I want to just give you this encouragement right here, if you can, to take the pressure off because summer is not necessarily for the harvesting. It might not even be for the planting of seeds. I think it's a really great time in our lives to just water, keep things alive, keep things sustained, keep things growing, rest the land where you can. The rhythms are different. Everybody's schedules shift a little bit. Even if yours isn't, you're at least probably perceiving the shift around you. The days are hot. It's hard to hustle when it's hot. So where you can, I want to encourage you to take the pressure off. I perceive that even as I'm talking right now, you know the areas of your life where you might have some explicit or implied pressure that you have placed on yourself to grow. What if you gave yourself the summer to maybe not see massive fruit in that area, but maybe to enjoy the season as it is, to water it, to keep it alive, to keep it ready, and then see a massive harvest in a season to come. Take the pressure off yourself. Number two, expect changes in community. Again, maybe your schedule is not changing at all. Maybe it's summer and you are going to show up to your job or to your life or to your work or to your rhythms the exact same way every single day. I think for many of us, there will at least be some shifts. No matter what, if your schedule is not changing at all, I want to encourage you to expect changes in community, at least in the people around you. If I'm being honest, this is one of the biggest ways that I see people just as a pastor and as a coach kind of crumble at the end of summer and the beginning of fall. To be totally honest, even at our church at Bright City, now my husband will get up before summer starts and he'll try to predict it and unpack it. And he'll say, hey guys, let me tell you what's gonna happen. This summer, you might be gone one Sunday because you go out of town. And the next Sunday, you might have a little summer cold. I'm working with one right now. And so you might miss church that Sunday. And the third Sunday, what might happen is you might have some friends in town because they are traveling and their season is different. And so you guys all decide to go to the beach that day. And then maybe the fourth Sunday, we're having a Sabbath Sunday because we'd already planned that because our volunteers need rest. And so we won't be gathering to meet for church. So all of a sudden what happens is that you don't go to church for an entire month. And then halfway through that week, you start to wonder if everybody's mad at you. And you start to wonder if the people who you were in a group with in the spring or who you saw back in January and February at a certain service, if they are frustrated with you. And then because you feel a little defensive that you think they might be mad at you, you get mad at them and you feel a little bitter with them. And you say, I mean, I was sick. My friends were in town and you get a little defensive and you feel a little funky. And because of all of that, when or if you do actually go back to church, you feel disjointed and you're kind of pissed at everybody because you think they're mad at you. When in reality, all that happened is that you had a summer. Nobody was mad at you. Nobody was actually even super noticing because they were thinking about their own selves. But what would happen if we all at the beginning of summer said, you know what? Things shift and things change and people's schedules get weird. And we're going to anticipate that. We're going to plan for that. And we're actually going to make a plan for how we will stay connected. So for example, I have a discipleship group, a group of gals that I meet with every other week throughout the year. We have an incredible time together. We're committed to one another. But guess what we do for the summer? We make a different plan. We cancel our every other week early morning meeting and we set one dinner that we'll meet up for one dinner during June, July, and August. Because we know that during the summer with kids out of school, or with people's schedules changing, or with family visiting in town, it's really hard to keep up with our normal rhythm. But then we make a plan to text each other once a week to just check in and say how we can be praying for each other. It's totally okay to expect changes in community. And I want to tell you, it may even help you feel 
less disoriented when fall comes around. Number one, take the pressure off yourself. Number two, expect changes in community. Number three, confess comparison and thereby demolish strongholds. Let me tell you what happens in summer. I don't know how everybody goes to Italy, but everybody goes to Italy. And I want to confess to you guys right now, I'm going to Italy this summer. I've never been. I've never been. I've been planning this trip for three or four years. When you see me in Italy, don't roll your eyes and say, oh, everybody's in Italy. I've never been to Italy. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I am thrilled. I'm out of my mind, blessed and grateful, but I don't want you to roll your eyes at me. Okay. Because for the last couple summers, I've been looking at being like, how is everybody and their mom in Italy? Or how is everybody at 30A or at Rosemary Beach? Or how is everybody getting to spend this really life-giving, beautiful picnic with their kids when I'm stuck inside the office? Or how is so-and-so sending every single one of her kids to camp? Do you know how much camps cost? I cannot imagine if every single one of my kids wanted to go to a camp. I would be bankrupt. I have to instead tell my kids they have to work at camp. What I'm saying is this. Summer is an incredible season for comparison to grow. Summer is an incredible season for all of us to get a nice, hearty infestation of MBN disease. MBN. MBN disease is must be nice. And what happens is you open social media and you look at so-and-so and and you look at like, wow, it's so great. She gets to go to the pool or wow, it's so great. Look at her. She's on vacation or wow, it's so great. Look at what she's doing. Or, oh my gosh, Jess said that the summer wouldn't be a great season for her to move forward in her career, but she just got a book deal. MBN must be nice. And what happens is that we start to think that this comparing and contrasting of our season to other people's seasons or our summer to other people's summer is totally normal and innocuous. And we don't realize it's actually a sin. God tells us what to do with comparison in the 10 commandments. He says, do not covet. And so I want to encourage you right now at the beginning of summer, when you feel yourself starting to play the MBN game, to actually confess that sin and repent and to bless the season you're in. If you have not already listened to our previous podcast episode, seize your season. It is for you. Confess your comparison and demolish that stronghold. 1 Corinthians 10 tells us that we have the power to demolish strongholds. And a stronghold is any idea that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And the idea that things are going better for other people and not for you is absolutely and can absolutely be a stronghold in your life. So in the name of Jesus, I want you to not play nice with this sin. Amen. Amen. Listen, friends, have you thought about writing a book? Do you know that one of the best ways to share your story is to write it down? Whether you're thinking about writing a memoir or a Bible study or a novel or even just a how-to guide, I have something really exciting to share. I want to invite you to the Start Your Book This Summer Challenge from my friends at Hope Writers. You can sign up for this free five-day challenge to start your book this summer. And all you have to do is visit hopewriters.com slash summer. In this five-day challenge, you'll uncover the best question to ask before starting your book. You'll learn why you are qualified to write your book, even if you don't feel like it. You'll discover the number one reason why this summer is the perfect time to start. This free challenge is brought to you by Hope Writers, the most encouraging place online for writers to make progress. So if you feel the urge to share your hope-filled words with the world now more than ever, start your book this summer. Head over to hopewriters.com slash summer. Number one, take the pressure off. Number two, expect changes in community. Number three, confess comparison and demolish strongholds. Number four, as rhythms shift, keep your spiritual ones. As rhythms shift, keep your spiritual ones. I'm putting on my pastor hat. I'm putting on my coach hat a little bit here. I'm not just your pal podcaster just now, okay? I'm telling you what I've learned from 
10 years of pastoring and coaching and leading people through summers is this. When the rhythms shift, when we stop going to our groups, when we maybe don't make it at church every single Sunday, when we're staying up later because the sun is up later, or when our work schedules are shifting, our spiritual rhythms tend to fall to the wayside. We stop spending time with the Lord. We stop practicing gratitude. We stop reading scripture. And I want to tell you that you are not hurting anybody but yourself when you let your spiritual rhythms shift. It is not that God needs you to do them. It's not that God expects you to do them. It's not that you should do them. It's that all of these are rhythms that help you feel whole and healthy and help you express the intimacy that is already yours for the taking. So this is my pastoral coaching encouragement to you. Let things shift. Let community shift. Let your rhythms shift. Let your work rhythms shift. Use paper plates instead of doing the dishes so much. In the name of Jesus, let things shift this summer, but keep the spiritual disciplines that help you feeling whole and healthy and alive in Jesus' name. So take the pressure off. Expect changes in community. Confess comparison and demolish strongholds. And as your rhythms shift, keep the spiritual ones. Here is the fifth way that I want to encourage you to make the most of summer. Act like Luke. Act like Luke. Here's what I mean. About 15 years ago now, it was actually 15 years ago now, as Nick Connolly, my husband and pastor and friend, came to me and said, hey, I feel called to plant a church. I want to tell you about it. I want to do it with you. Like, I want us to do this together. I think this is our calling. He knew that I really did not like that idea. I didn't like it one bit. And he said, I actually have a special role for you. I have a piece that I feel like God wants to invite you into in this church plant. And I said, oh yeah, what? (laughs) I thought it would just be the girl complaining in the corner. And he said, I need you to be my Luke. And I said, okay, say more. And I don't know if you know about the gospel of Luke, but Luke is really interesting because he wasn't one of Jesus's disciples, but he was someone who was sent to go interview different eyewitnesses who had experienced the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And it's said of Luke that he wouldn't put anything in his gospel unless he could get it corroborated by at least two or three eyewitnesses. So he really wanted to make sure that everything that he put in his book was was trustworthy and factual. Luke was actually a doctor. So he was really reporting in almost kind of like a scientific and medical sense sometimes. And Nick said, I need you to be my Luke for Bright City. I need you to capture what God has done and what he's doing. I need you to write the story of it. I need you to take the pictures of it. And and it wasn't that Nick was saying, like, that's all I want you to do. He knew that I would do more things. He just also knew that that is what one thing that I'm good at. I'm good at noticing. And I want to encourage you to act like Luke this summer because you will love what you notice. Take a bunch of pictures. Take a bunch of videos. Journal after the end of a long day. Even if it's just capturing your feelings or your frustrations or something you did or said at work or something your kids did or said, act like Luke. You will savor and love and steward this season if you notice it. But if you let it pass by you without paying attention to what God is doing, you might get to the end of summer and feel like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I kind of felt left out or I kind of felt like it was a lot or now I'm not even ready for fall. But if you squeeze the juice out of every day, the glory and the beauty and the hard and the goodness and the weakness and the strength and the presence and the power out of every single day by noticing it, you will absolutely not feel like this season was wasted. You'll feel like you dug down deep and experienced all God had for you. I want to encourage you guys in these ways. Take the pressure off yourself. Expect changes in community. Confess comparison and demolish strongholds. As your rhythm shift, keep the spiritual ones and act like Luke. Pay attention, notice, take pictures, capture what God is doing. Let me pray for you and send you out into this beautiful, wonderful, wild summer that he has for us. 
God, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for what you're doing in their life. I thank you for how you're moving in their midst. I thank you for the beauty. I thank you for the heart. I thank you for the abundance. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the hope. Would you give them eyes to see? Would you give them ears to hear? Would you give us all just the capacity to notice and love and take care of the season that we're in. Help us to feel present in it and not behind. Help us to feel like we can make moves in your name and not like we're stuck. Help us to see other people, to love other people, to encourage other people, and also to encourage our own hearts too. So in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, I'm so grateful you listened to today's episode. Thanks for spending time with me. It would mean the world to me to connect with you. So you can send me a DM on Instagram at Jess A. Connolly or head to my website, JessConnolly.com for more ways to connect. If you have a minute to subscribe and leave a review of the podcast wherever you listen, it would massively help us reach more people with the good news that they can live fully awake. Let's go. Let's go.